comparable to today's bullets. It was quite likely that the bow together with its arrow were the high-tech weapons of those days. It greatly strengthened the power of the Qin army in its attacks. In 214 BC, the Qin army launched an all-out war against the Hun cavalry. Within a year, 300,000 Hun cavalrymen were utterly destroyed. A large area of land to the south of the Yellow River returned to the Qin Empire. Bows played a vitally important role in winning this war. It can be imagined that showers of arrows could accurately hit the enemy war horses and cavalrymen before they charged the Qin's position. The accuracy of the Hun archers could in no way match the Qin's cavalry. The Hun's leather armor could not resist the strong penetrating power of the Qin arrows. Arrows were the most deadly weapons to the Hun cavalrymen. As one Chinese classic on the art of war says, the crossbow was the most effective weapon against the attack of the nomadic peoples in ancient times. The design of the bronze crossbow was an amazing achievement. It was too difficult and complicated for the Huns to copy this mechanical device. New discoveries were made when the specialists carried out in-depth study of the Qin's weapons. The P was a long-handled weapon originating from a dagger. Its shape once varied widely. The shape and size of the P discovered in the pit of terracotta warriors are completely the same, though they were produced over ten years apart. These two dagger axes were not made in the same year, but they are exactly alike. Erjo in Hubei province was the old site of the state of Chu. Archaeologists discovered a Qin sword there. This long, thin Qin sword was entirely different from the bronze Chu sword in those days. But its shape is exactly the same as the Qin sword in the pit of terracotta warriors. More than 40,000 three-edged arrowheads discovered in the pit of terracotta warriors were all made to standard specifications. The average error was only plus or minus 0.83 millimeters in the width of the bottom of the arrowhead. Metallurgists in Beijing Science and Engineering University carried out a metallurgical analysis of the arrowheads of the Qin army. They found the proportions of metal were almost the same. Thousands of arrowheads were cast based on the same formula. That is to say, all the arrowheads shot by the Qin army were of the same powerful quality, no matter whether they were used in the battlefields in the northern grasslands or in the southern forests. Could it be said that the arms workshops all over the Qin Empire purposely or even compulsorily produced those weapons according to a certain fixed technical formula? If this was true, the Qin's had far outstripped their own times. Standardization is the foundation of modern industry. Standardized production makes it possible for component parts made by different suppliers to be assembled and enables mass production. Two thousand years ago, when agricultural civilization had just begun to mature, what was the Qin's purpose if they did have standardized production of weapons? As the production of the crossbow used by the Qin army was entirely standard, their spare parts had to be interchangeable. On the battlefield, the Qin army could reassemble the crossbows by using the intact spare parts of the damaged ones. 
and other weapons in the Qin army could be interchanged as well. As far as most of the ancient weapons were concerned, the degree of accuracy required for interchangeability was not very high. The specialists estimate the standardization of the Qin's must have a more important purpose. Various kinds of weapons discovered in the terracotta warrior pit must have performed perfectly on the battlefield. Most likely they were optimized from the experience gained over hundreds of years of war. Specialists deduce that the Qin's must have regularized the technical formula for these optimized weapons. Laws on the technical formula were issued by the state and followed by all arms manufacturers. Judging by present industrial standards, the standardization of those weapons was rather rough and ready. But it's quite certain that the reason the Qin's insisted on the standard formula was to ensure every soldier was using the best weapons. The weapons of the Qin army were all exquisitely made. There were three edges over 90 centimeters long on each flat side of the long, thin sword which divided it into eight separate surfaces. It was extremely difficult to produce these surfaces by hand. The processed part of the circular arc on a dagger axe was highly precise. The three streamlined surfaces on an arrowhead were exactly symmetrical. What perplexes the specialists is the fact that it was possible for some gifted craftsmen to turn out some pieces of this kind of weapon, but the real situation was hundreds of thousands of weapons in the pit of terracotta warriors were nearly the same quality. According to Sima Qian's records, the strength of the Qin army was more than one million men. Besides, this army was highly specialized and was equipped with very advanced weapons. In Europe, at nearly the same time, Alexander's army numbered around 50,000, and even in the strongest Roman army group, there were only hundreds of thousands of soldiers. It was an unimaginable task to supply an army of one million soldiers with weapons. In the Ten Years' War of Unification, the arms workshops in the Qin Empire must have been the busiest places in the world. They had to work full steam ahead, night and day. The problem was not only how to ensure the formula was standard, but also to achieve mass production. Traces of polishing can still be clearly seen when one carefully examines the circular arc of this dagger axe. There are crisscross polishing traces if done by hand. They are caused by the back and forth friction of a polisher. But the strange thing is, no sign of such crisscross traces can be found. The specialists presume the processing of the surfaces of those bronze weapons must have been done by a grinding wheel. Whether or not there was a grinding wheel 2,000 years ago has yet to be proved by archaeological evidence. Even if a grinding wheel was used, it was impossible to process these arc surfaces by hand, nor could thousands of pieces of weapons be produced up to the same standard. <laughs> Maybe mechanical facilities enabled them to mass produce equipment with enough quality. However, researchers haven't found any evidence of that. The Qin arms workshops remain a secret. Some characters were engraved on the weapons from the pit of terracotta warriors, which were quite similar to today's Chinese characters. Specialists found most of them were personal names. The name that appeared most frequently was Xianbang Lu Bu Wei. Lu Spring and Autumn Annals was the most important historical document of the Qin Empire. Its compiler was Lu Bu Wei. He was then Prime Minister of the Qin Empire. According to Lu's Spring and Autumn Annals, a Qin law stated that a producer had to engrave his own name on his products.
These characters look like ordinary ones, but they reveal the management secrets of the military industry of the Qin Empire. Liu Bu Wei, as the Prime Minister, was the top supervisor of military production. Under him was the Gongshi. The Gongshi was the head of an arms workshop. The head supervising the production of this dagger arc was called Zhe. Under the Zhe was a Chen, who was similar to a workshop superintendent. His name was Yi. The craftsman producing this dagger arc was called Cheng. The specialists have thus come to the conclusion that the military management system was divided into four grades. From Xiangbang, Gongshi, Chen, down to every single craftsman, they were in charge at each level. The person in charge could be found out by the name engraved on the weapon if any quality problem occurred. We don't know the management details, but the Qin Empire law was very severe on those who neglected their duty. So, Wuli Gong Ming, you see, I'm not going to give you the names. You call Qi Cheng, can do the right thing. Good thing. If you do the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing. Ah, one day you do the wrong thing. 要罚你, From the inscription engraved on the ice cold bronze, we can imagine the fate of the ordinary people in those ancient times. Zhe was the head of an arms workshop for many years. He had to supervise the production of weapons every day. He was responsible to Prime Minister Liu Bu Wei. The head of an arms workshop had to suffer punishment if something went wrong with the quality of a weapon, according to the law of the Qin Empire. He had to do his duty for his family and himself. Large numbers of craftsmen were at the bottom of a pyramid-shaped management system. The specialists could only find the names of 16 craftsmen in the inscriptions. <laughs> 这个是读第二的,就是,啊,这个人也是干了十六年工人。我看到去联系的,我看到联系上都是十六年,当然可能还要长了。The craftsmen were generally under a system of life tenure in the arms workshops. In any case, this craftsman called Diao had to spend his life in the workshop. In his 16 years of hard work, Diao must have suffered quite a number of frustrations. It was ordinary people like Diao who produced these excellent weapons which still exist today. From the remaining traces of their work, we can still feel their rough hands and concentrated eyesight. Numerous arms workshops in the Qin Empire could produce a large amount of weapons of high quality based on a unified formula. Their four-graded pyramid-shaped management system was the basic guarantee. When most of the world was still in a state of wilderness and ignorance, the Qin's had created the most powerful arms producing industry in those days with their unique minds and wisdom. Now we can answer the initial question. People were not able to make iron as skillfully as they processed bronze in the times of Qin. For this reason, the first large unified empire in Chinese history was still forged with bronze. 2,000 years ago, the Qin's had developed the working of bronze to its utmost point. Those bronze weapons had played a tremendously powerful role in the war of unification. Nevertheless, the question remains, how did the Qin army use their bronze weapons? More riddles about this army from long, long ago remain for archaeologists to solve. <laughs>